So we're here to experience 1,000 years of knowledge of science from the golden age from the Islamic world. This exhibition really showcases some of the researchers and scholars in a thousand years from the 7th to the 17th century in the Islamic world. So we've got Al Jazri who was a very famous um, engineer, designed lots of mechanical devices, even some of the early robotics. We've got Ibn al-Hatim who was an op optician, a physicist and discovered lots of things about that. We've got al Zawri, who was a famous surgeon. So lots of things um, to learn about these famous scholars and scientists from that period. Yes. And you were telling me that, you know, the science and these scientists kind of traveled through the South Asian region as well. The Islamic world during the, from the 7th to the 17th century encompassed lots of parts of uh, Northern Africa, even um, Southern uh, Europe. Um, we've got Middle Eastern regions and also India, Malaysia, even up to China. So what this uh, exhibit does is it brings you those people who were actually traveling within this Islamic world and bringing information from different parts of the world and building their science knowledge. How has their theories, their knowledge really affected us today in 2014? We kind of think of things like combination locks uh, as modern day inventions but yes. when you look in the, the period from well, some of Al Jazri's inventions or Banu Musa brother inventions, they use combination locks then. We've got gears that are part of all kinds of devices today like cars, your phone, your clocks, all of them have gears and these were all, all being worked on during that time period. When you look at the surgical tools that Al Zarawi invented, you compare them with modern tools, they look so similar and you're like, oh, what? They were making and using these things then? So it's quite a surprise. As much as this is really indicative of the golden age of science, there are pieces of art as well. I'm looking at the elephant clock and it's so artistic. There's so much detail, there's so much intricacies put into these technologies. Did they function as art back then? You're absolutely right. Actually, when you look outside at Al Jazri's musical board, that was actually an artistic endeavor. The king, Urtu yeah. King in Diyarbakir, actually wanted a musical board. So he got this engineer who develops mechanical devices to actually make a boat. It would, you know, move on the water for about half an hour or so and then every half an hour it would stop and these robotically uh, designed uh, people would move and it would play music. That's an artistic endeavor and this uh, elephant clock is another example of that. And the, another amazing piece about the elephant clock is that you can see the influences from all parts of the world that they were familiar with. You got the Chinese dragons there, up there you have the uh, Egyptian bird, you have got the elephant and the mahout from India, the style of architecture from uh, um, Egypt. So you can just see within one endeavor, so many, one, cultures. So many cultures, right? And so it's, it's quite amazing that they were doing this at that time.